Hi guys, it's Rachel here from RachelTheStamper.com and I wanted to take a few minutes today to go over a few um, tips and tricks I've learned with the Stamparatus. So um, I know a lot of people have had some issues with stamping in the corners, so stamping in the corner if you had a Misty. So what I thought I would do is I've learned a few tips from some people that I thought I would kind of put together in a video and share. And um, I just want to show you one other thing for a moment. So just putting the Stamparatus to the side, um, I do in fact own a Misty. I had this prior to having the Stamparatus and I just wanted to show you guys just a few things um, about them that are different and that maybe will also help you to make up your mind if you do think a Stamparatus would be right for you or to maybe also clear up some um, not really misconceptions, but just some different ways that people stamp and the changes you would have to make between the two. So um, as you all can see here, so this is a Misty. I'm going to try to put my magnets. Actually, I will tell you, I had my Misty for about two minutes and I busted my magnets. Um, and they're very small. So I will say that I do, I love the concept of the Misty. I love the Stamparatus equally because it does a world of different things. So Comparing the two is also a little bit hard to do because they do different things re respectively. But the magnets that come with the Misty, I did break them right away. And I did not find that they were quite as strong as I needed, especially for photopolymer stamps. So this one you can see I have kind of taped because it's kind of more like a Pac-Man shape. It lost its circle shape almost immediately. And I'll put that over here. And then so I ended up having to get a, bar, a, a new bar magnet for the Misty almost immediately when I ordered it. Um, so basically with the Misty device, you do have this where it is a door hinge, so you can only stamp depending on what size of a card you have on the inside of this area here. So, okay, so this is about a six, six by eight stamping field. Um, it is wonderful because you can butt up to the edge of it. Um, apparently they also had some of these that came without these, I don't even know what they call them here, but these little walls. Um, so you can get a bigger one. This one I believe was about 60, 60 some dollars, including shipping with having it shipped. The Stamparatus is 49 and then shipping I think is about $7. So it is cheaper, um, but, but aside from the point, you can get a larger Misty, but again, they do go up in price considerably. So with your Misty stamping tool, basically what you do is you have your, um, your stamp, and what you would do is you would put your piece of cardstock down, and most people will put this in the corner. As you know, I'm just going to demonstrate with photopolymer, you do need to put the mat in. But you would um, put it in, you put your magnet where you want it, you're going to close the door, and then, so it's not going to pick it up. Let me go back and do that so you can see what I mean. So you would put your paper down, put your stamp on where you want it, put your magnet here, and you're going to pick up your stamp. And then if you wanted to do, for example, line stamping, you actually have to, you have to adjust your stamp. So you'd have to stamp it, move it up, move it up, move it up. So there are cool things about the Stamparatus that you don't have to do that. But here's the main thing I'm getting at. When you stamp with a Misty, everything just goes in the corner because that's just the way it is. That's the place you stamp. You stamp in the corner, you stamp in the corner. You can't really stamp up top um, just because you will, you, you'll fall off the edge here with your stamping. So you can't really stamp up top you kind of have to stay to the corner. So if you've had a Misty before and that's what you've worked with, you're used to being in the corner. So a lot of times people will say with the Stamparatus, well, I can't stamp in the corner. Well, you can stamp in the corner, but the thing is that you just have to take it from a little bit different of a perspective when you're going to stamp in the corner. So let me explain that a little further. So again, with your Misty, you do have to, um, you close it, you stamp, you can do the same thing. You can do line patterns, you can ink it up. But you have to be careful with cleaning your Misty because these grid lines are not etched into the to the door. Stamper, um, the Stamparatus, the grid lines are etched in, so you cannot ever wipe them off. So you do have to be careful with this if you own a Misty. You want to be careful what you clean it with because you can remove the grid lines if you use those. Personally, I don't. I kind of just eyeball things. So maybe that's a, a, a problem I probably never had. But let me put this out of the way so I can show you just a few other things and kind of just other ways that you can stamp with the Stamparatus. Whoopsie, stamps falling from the sky. You can stamp with the Stamparatus. You just have to kind of change the way you view it. So the cool part about the Stamparatus is you have these two plates. So you have one on each side. 
and you can rotate this 360 degrees depending on the way you want to stamp if you're right-handed left-handed or what it is that you want to do but the other cool part about this is is that you can actually put a stamp here on this side so just for purposes say we put this stamp here and we we're finished working with it but we wanted to keep that because we were going to make another card so all you have to do is lift it up flip it around open it back up again and then just for the sake of adding something you could add in a rose and then you could stamp your rose so now you have two different stamps on two different sides that you can theoretically keep in place so you could do this if you did classes or if you were making cards a lot of cards if you're making I just got my very first order so if you were making um, a bunch of wedding invitations or whatever it may be you can keep your stamps here okay but here's the other thing you also have this other plate that now you could add two entirely new stamps to. So you could add in, say, this little scroll piece here, and then you could stamp with that. And then when you're finished, you could do the same thing, flip it around, and then you could add in some words if you want to add that to your card. Now, granted, you do all have to figure out where you're going to put this or just willy-nilly putting it on there now. But now you have four different stamping surfaces that you can keep occupied at the same time so you could make a card in many different ways and have everything on here all you have to do is flip it around wipe it off and keep going and as I said the um, the grid marks on here if you can hear that they're actually etched into this um, door so no matter how you clean it on both sides it's it's softer on one side the other side is etched in you're not actually gonna rub them off so you only have to worry about cleaning this with a baby wipe you can clean it with you know like a mic microfiber towel a wet cloth very easy to clean up so you do also have a pad so this is for your photopolymer stamps when you're not using photopolymer if you're using clear stamps then you would take that out and you would just stamp directly onto this base this also is cleanable you can just wipe it off with a towel and then underneath it has two places for you to put magnets now one thing I will tell you is you don't want to have these two magnets very close together because they will attach so what I did is I went ahead and put some um, blue tape or you could use green tape if you wanted to but this is basically painters tape and I kind of left myself a little tail that will be easy to pick them up so they, they will stick to the bottom as you can see there they will stick to this and it, they're stronger attracted to the base um, than the bottom just because of where the magnets are so that being said if you do have a pacemaker these are magnets you probably don't want to be using this device or misty for that matter um, but as long as you keep these off of a table together, they really don't attract. And if they do attract, the easy way to get them apart is just to slide them this way off of each other. Okay. But again, having them taped ahead of time will also prevent from having the, uh, the little brittle pieces like I showed you with the little round magnets. I mean, those things, they were everywhere. So if you pre-tape these prior to using them, so you pull one off as soon as you get it, you wrap it with the tape, make yourself a little tail, put it back on, do the same with the other. You'll always have a little handle to be able to grab them with. And when you do this you really only for the most part can you can get away with one I do use both but what I'll do is I'll put one at the top of whatever project I'm doing and one at the bottom just to have them in the corners but for the most part you probably can get away with just one I know here's the thing that people love photopolymer stamps but you got to remember they are sticky so they do tend to pull the paper up a little bit so if let me just pull this off and I'm going to show you a better way to get back in the corners which people are having a little bit of a problem with is that you kind of just have to change how maybe you would normally lay out your card okay so most of the time if you had your if you were using a misty you'd be over here in the corner okay I'll put this mat in you'd be in the corner stamping here just like this now if you were in the corner stamping there which you also can stamp on this black mat. It's kind of like the piercing mat. You can wipe it off. It's not going to stain. You, um, so say for example, you were going to stamp something like this and you're going to bring your door over. Okay, so logistically, just think of this for a minute. You would not stamp something here in the misty either, up here in the corner. You wouldn't. Now granted, I know your corner is in a different position, but if your hinge is coming over from this way, you're probably not going to be stamping something up there anyway. You would most likely be stamping it over here in the bottom so really all you have to do if you wanted to stamp something in the corner is just rotate it so instead you're gonna pick it up and turn it and you're gonna put it here you can add your little bar in you can add your flower in up here okay so say that's where you wanted your flower and all you're gonna do is close your door pick it up 
And as I said, you will see that it does pull a little bit. So if this was the case, since these are brand new, I've not used these, especially not the rose before, you can add your other magnet in. So you could put one over here and you can even wrap this around if you wanted to, because it's not really gonna get in the way and bring one down here. And then all you're gonna do is stamp just like that. So for example, let's take, ooh, what are we gonna be losing some? Let's do Sweet Sugar Plum and we'll do Flirty Flamingo as the base. Actually, we might have to do something a little lighter. But basically, what you're gonna do is ink up your stamp, press. Now, here's the cool thing. If it didn't turn out just like you like, just like the Misty would be able to, and many other devices, which I don't, I don't have, you just ink it back up and re-stamp it, and it will make your image darker again. Then, if you wanted to take your flower on the inside, so we'll just close this up. Now, you do want to make sure you protect your surface because obviously right now if I drop this down, it will ink onto my grid paper, but it's just grid paper. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your um, other part of your flower. I'm sorry, I'm having a, a mind lapse here. You're going to take the other part of your flower, your rose, and you're just going to pick that one up just like that. Just make sure it's back in the corner again. Make sure it's nice and lined up how you want it. And then I'm gonna to try to go a little bit lighter. So we'll go with some Wisteria Wonder. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just ink up my rose inside here. And beautiful, lined up perfectly. So now you've stamped in that corner that you can't get into, but you just have to look at it from a different direction. Okay, so now we're gonna close up this Wisteria Wonder. I'm just gonna grab, I have some baby wipes here because my baby doesn't use them any longer. So I'm going to just grab a baby wipe and I'm going to just wipe off this stamp just in case I decided I wanted to stamp it in a different color. I'm going to pull this up. When you pull these out, you want to pull them straight up and then out. Just wipe off this ink here. Now you've got a completely clean stamp so you can pick a completely different color if you want or you can take this out, set it to the side. And then at this point, say you decided now you want to stamp something in a different corner. So now, if you normally were to stamp over here, and you wanted to add something in the bottom corner here, so now you're just gonna go to the opposite side. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this here, so it's up out of the way, and I'm gonna put a little one down here, and now we would decide what we wanted to put at the bottom. So for example, let's say we're gonna put this really pretty rail down here, okay? And I'm gonna put this a little bit more center. I'm gonna leave this one off to the side. I'm gonna close my hinge here and let's see what would look nice with this how about tranquil tide i'm not sure we're just going for anything so you're gonna stamp ink this up okay and then we're gonna take this we're gonna press okay and now we have it ink now i will tell you this spot here isn't going to ink kind of the same thing with the door now we were aiming for going for this side Okay, so if that's something that you want to do, all you're going to do, just for the sake of, since I'm going to switch this around so I don't end up dropping it on the paper, I'm going to wipe it off, just like that. And then, two things. So you can do one of two things now if this is where you were going. You could take a silicone mat if you had it. You can put this underneath if you were definitely wanting to stamp in the corner. And then what you do is just ink up the, the stamp again. Oops, I got some fuzz on my finger. And then you're gonna give it a press. Okay. And now granted I didn't line that up correctly. So what you would want, <laughs> what you would want to do, not uh, explaining as be best as I should have, is you would want to make sure you put your mat in the bottom if you were wanting to stamp in the corner because it does give you a completely inked image. However, my image wasn't lined up correctly. So what I'll do is for the sake of showing you, I will flip this over. So now you see we have the mat underneath. You have your cardstock. Get that, make sure he's up in the corner. We'll just re ink this one more time. And press. Press completely inked image. So it is fully inked from one side to the other. This goes all the way to the edge to the corner. So there's another option for you. Let me just wipe this off one more time. But again, if you wanted to stamp something, where you were just stamping into that lower corner, you kind of just have to 
think about how you would lay it out if you were doing something the opposite way because you are doing it the opposite way. This tool is not the Misty. This tool is the Stamparatus. So it is completely different from the Misty in a similar-ish fashion, but it really isn't the same thing. So you can't go at it looking that it's going to work the same because it's not designed the same. It's designed to be able to have a really large field so you could stamp any kind of paper that you had. You could fit it all the way in. You could add anything in and you could stamp different sizes. You could um, do something where, say if you had a whole sheet of images here and you wanted to add, um, like make a background stamp so you could put something in here. I'm gonna show you, get another piece of paper. Let me take this out. Another piece of paper and I'm gonna go with this side now just so I can show you. So say we wanted to do something in a line form, okay? So we're just gonna say, we wanted to start with having First Communion, okay? All right, so what you would do is you're gonna take your, take your stuff off. The coolest part about this is, so you are able to do something different. We're at, um, basically meaning like lining this up, making a line of this going straight down. I'll move this over just a smidge. Pick this up, okay, again. Now if you're gonna put this here, I'm going to just show you one more time with this to the bottom. Let's make sure that lined up where I had it in the beginning. So I'm going to put this here just like that. So we'll start with Wisteria Wonder because this is a little bit lighter, right? So we're going to ink this up. Okay. Have our first communion. We're going to do the same thing now except we're going to just move it down, pick it up. Move it down a step. Okay, so it's going to line up the same. We're going to just ink it up again. Okay, same thing again. Looks good. We're going to just straighten it. Move it down one more notch. I'm actually going to skip this one because I want to make one. Nope, you know what? I'm going to make that one. I'm going to go down a one more spot before it because I want to do is just make it darker. So light to dark. Okay, so now I'm going to move this up here just because I want to give that a second to dry. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna do this one because this one will be light. I'm gonna go down one more because I want to make that um, that next to last one. I'm gonna make it darker. So again, this is just my bottom one. Okay, so you have your bottom one in there. I'm gonna move this down just a bit so it holds it, and then I'm gonna move this back up into that middle spot. Okay, and we'll do this with. Rich Razzleberry. It's a little bit darker, but not too, too dark. Okay, and then you're just going to bring that in. Press. And so now you have basically line stamping. So it's a pattern. Completely, perfectly lined up. It's in the exact same position. Sorry, my inky fingers. Hopefully it won't ruin it. But same position. You can make it dark. You could add in any other little stuff you wanted to add in here by simply taking your... Um, your door flipping it over and then what you could do is decide if you wanted to add something so say for example this is just something really really simple you just want to add these little dots in so you would just do the same thing so you would decide where you wanted it oops this is a little hard one to line up <laughs> okay so we're going to put this back here now all we're going to do is simply close the door press again pick that stamp back up Make sure it's nice and lined up. Now, something that's contrasty, I'll say we'll go with fresh fig, just so it'll give it some definition. So all you're gonna do is just fresh fig, add in your dots, okay? Take it straight up, move it down a notch. And then what this is gonna do is it's gonna just fit it. I know I didn't re-ink that. Just gonna fit it in, in between. Same thing again. Pick this up, move this to a different position, slide this down one more, and Okay, and then say you did it and you're like, you know what? I really think that other one should be darker because it doesn't really match the pattern. I'm gonna show you. So you go back and you're gonna add this one in and you decide, you know what? You want that one to be darker so it'll match. So all you do is you move back up to your second set of notches and you say, okay, where was that there? Ink it up. Now you do wanna be a little bit lighter so it's not too dark considering you already inked it once. And there you go. You can re-ink exactly where you were 
even though you weren't even close to that position just by moving it back up where it was again. Okay, so really, really simple, easy thing to be able to do. And then I just wanna show you one more time. I'm gonna show you both corners again, and I'm gonna show you these without, oops, without the silicone mat, just so you can understand again, just the opposite stamping of stamping out of the corner. Grab one more baby wipe. And just clean this off. And I'm gonna just pick this straight up. Wipe this side off, make sure everything's nice and clean over here. And again, you can take these plates to the kitchen sink if you like, or the bathroom sink. And um, you could just rinse them with warm water as well when you're finished, up to you. I know a lot of people have um, baby wipes. Baby wipes are pretty, pretty reasonable to be able to buy. I've heard, um, if I will say reviews between the two, these are from um, BJ's. These are BJ's brands wipes. They do, they do have a little bit of a lint extra. That was just an old tea towel that I just dried that off with. I've heard that Costco's wipes, Costco brand wipes, do not lint, and they are really, really, um, they're really, really reasonable, but they're really, really easy to use. So if you're looking for something simple to buy and you're at Costco, there you go. Okay, so basically I'm just going to show you one more time just to be able to ink into the corner here. I'm getting ink everywhere at this point now. So if you wanted to do something up in the corner, like there's this really beautiful cross. So I'll put that right there. Close our window. I'm going to pick it up. Let me just make sure I'm right back in the corner here. This is another thing too. If you want, you can take some of your grid paper. And what you can do is you can go ahead and just stick this in. I kind of usually stick it so it's corner, hard corner. And that way you'll know where you're located if you'd like. So I have my cross. I'm going to just ink this in some smoky slate. Okay, nice. Not dark enough. Go back in and re-ink it again. It's going to be in the same position. And then, if you wanted to take and add, so we're going to take this. We're going to set this on the. Oops, set this on. Oh, see, and there they went. Two of them grabbed together. So they did go together. All you <laughs> just goes to show you. I forgot I had two out. All you do is just pull them straight apart. So these did not break, but. Worst case scenario, if they did, they're already taped up. So at least they didn't shatter into a million pieces and pinch your finger. So let me put this one back under here. <sighs> Tell you, never a dull moment. Okay, so now I want to just show you how to stamp it to the other side here. So you finished with your cross and you're going to stamp something, say, down here into the bottom. So we're going to just add in our little magnet. And we'll just say we're going to put something down here that says christening just like that okay so now all we would do see if I have that lined up the way I want it I'm just gonna close that I'm gonna pick it up and stick this back and again if you notice that it picks up especially with the photopolymer because they are a little bit more tacky all you want to do is just add in your second magnet no big deal so I'm just gonna take the archival ink ink up the christening and then you have your bottom corner Okay, without any, oops, missed a little spot there, hold on. Without any compromise in inking spots, okay? So then you have your christening, and these are both beautifully, granted, don't mind the smudges, but beautifully lettered images. They're completely inked. This one we did twice, just to make it a little bit darker. You could do the same thing if you're doing this with a lighter color. But I hope that helps you guys a little bit with... Um, just a little bit of um, smoothing out some of the questions and whatnot about the Stamparatus. So if you do have any additional questions other than that, please feel free to shoot me an email. Um, you can reach me at reachthestamper gmail.com. You can also leave comments here on the um, YouTube page as well. I do go through and check the comments, even if it's an older video, I still do get notifications. I try not to turn them off because I know um, when I first started stamping, it was very difficult to um, find some of the answers I needed if the boards were turned off with questions. So I don't don't turn those off and again I'm just wiping this off with my baby wipe and then what I'll do is I'll go back and just dry this off with that just old tea towel which I'm pretty sure almost everybody has one of those lying around as well and then you do want to make sure that when you store your Stamparatus that you take these um, you take these out okay so you could store one down if you wanted to but you want to put the other one in so it holds it up because if you put them put this down and then you put this one down you could crack 
the um, plates, which you don't want to do that, okay? So usually what I'll do is I'll just take both of them, just pull them out like that, and just kind of nest them inside each other. And then the cool part is your magnets just go right underneath to wipe those off because I tend to get my magnets a little bit inky. And then all you have to do is I just kind of slide this in. I have, will tell you, I have seen a few other people who have taken their boxes from their Stamparatus and they will actually take their box and they wrapped it in designer series paper and they kind of cut the top off that way they can just slide it in. So that's another cool idea for storage with the Stamparatus. Just use the box that it came in. You can decorate it with some designer series paper if you have something laying around that maybe wasn't your favorite, but it'll make your box look a little prettier. So again, I hope this has um, answered some questions for you guys with stamping in the corners of the Stamparatus and the Stamparatus compared to the Misty. Remember that they are very similar devices, but they're also not the same whatsoever. And Stampin' Up! was looking to design a product that would be something that was more versatile that you'll be able to use for bigger pieces of paper um, also for scrapbooking versus just making cards and the other cool part is it really is it's very simple if you want to do the um, the lined pattern design it's really really easy to move this down even with different images as well so again if you guys have any questions please feel free to shoot me an email at reach the stamper gmail.com otherwise thanks for watching I hope you all have a great day and if you want you can click follow right here on YouTube and what that will do is it'll let you know every time I put out a new video and when I go live so thanks for watching guys I hope you have a great day